I want to thank one of my subscribers for suggesting this story, and upon researching it, I uncovered a wider debate not just about the story itself, but what it could mean for the music industry and how the mainstream media started shining a light on mosh pits at concerts. In 1994, America would suffer its first death as a result of moshing. The death would happen at a Life of Agony concert on December 16th in 1994 at a Brooklyn venue. An 18-year-old fan named Christopher Mitchell would die as a result of stage diving. Mitchell, who hailed from Pearl River, New York, drove into New York City to see Life of Agony's show nine days before Christmas. At that show, Mitchell would stage dive several times before his last dive saw him end up dead. The police would arrest a security guard working the concert that night named James Gaeta, who was accused of throwing Mitchell off the stage onto an empty part of the dance floor. His arrest was due to the fact that some audience members claimed they saw him throw Mitchell off the stage. Mitchell would land head first, suffer a fractured skull, and pass away the following day. Gaeta would go to trial accused of second degree and criminally negligent homicide, but he would plead not guilty with his lawyer telling the press, My client says that he didn't push him. I feel badly that this young man died. I think everybody does, but I don't think someone should be punished if he didn't do it. Gaeta's lawyer claimed that Mitchell was intoxicated the night of the concert, and the concert industry expected the outcome of the trial to be on the same level as the temporary ban on festival seating that followed the infamous concert that The Who played in 1979 in Cincinnati that resulted in 11 deaths. Mitchell's parents, whose father worked for American Airlines and his mother a nurse, would appear on several TV shows to discuss concert safety, and their state senator, Joseph R. Holland, would propose legislation that held venues liable for any moshing injuries. They would also file a civil suit against the security guard and the concert venue, which by 1996 had closed its doors. Mitchell's parents would tell the Times they weren't trying to ban moshing, with his father telling the paper, I'm not looking to ban anything. If you think moshing is okay for you, go ahead and do it. But here is one incident that's a reference point for you. The rise in injuries at concerts also brought more litigation to America's courts, with victims seeking damages for their injuries. The Times would interview an insurance company that covers music artists named Entertainment Insurance Agency, who told the paper they had seen six times the number of claims they had in the 80s, with the owner telling the paper, We've grown into a more litigious society. A lot of these are mosh pit cases. Of course, the news media jumped all over this with the New York Times publishing an article that read, it has become common ritual at rock concerts, people banging against one another on the dance floor, hurling themselves from the stage into the crowd, tossing one another overhead like beach balls. It is known as moshing. And while some may find the practice mystifying, possibly even violent, few would think of it as life-threatening. Here's a news report from the early 90s discussing moshing. A dance craze, and on just about any weekend in Winnipeg, you can find young people moshing. But rather than have me describe what it's all about, let's go with CBC cameraman Brian Rougeau for a wild night of moshing at the West End Cultural Center. New dance craze, sweeping the nation, moshing! <laughs> Moshing is not something you can look up in the dictionary and have like a, you know, definition for what is moshing to like everybody because it's very individual. I managed to get someone's boot in my face and I broke my nose. When people go in the pit, they go in there because they know what's going to happen and they have fun doing it. It was in this article that the New York Times stated that as popularity of moshing increased, so did deaths at rock concerts. By 1996, deaths at rock shows outside of America were tallied to be around 22 over the last four years with over 10,000 people suffering injuries worldwide. It was the same year that Mitchell died that two other concert goers in America became quadriplegics due to moshing. One happened during a Lollapalooza stop on August 3rd in New England, while another injury happened during a Pantera show in Maryland. Woodstock 94 for its part had upwards of 7,000 injuries. The Times would interview a Chicago-based organization called Crowd Management Strategies that conducts annual rock concert safety surveys, whose founder was actually a mosher himself, telling the paper, Moshing is dangerous, period. It's the responsibility of the people who put on public events to provide a safe environment. But defenders of the industry claim that concert security was generally good and the media was blowing things out of proportion with the booking agent for Spin Doctors and White Zombie telling the Times, maybe you'll have a broken bone or two every now and then, but the real serious injuries that you see a lot of in the press is not what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Is it a little bit more aggressive these days? Yes, but everything is more aggressive. Moshing by the mid-90s seemed to elicit different feelings from those in the concert arenas, 
with some bands encouraging it and asking for chairs to be removed, while some venues bolted chairs to the floor to stop moshing from happening. Even CBGB's owner by the mid-90s discouraged the practice, with owner Hilly Crystal telling the Times, I've been against it from the start because people do get hurt. I do have hardcore bands, but I'm very careful. The Hartford Current will report in 1995 that even when some venues took a stand against that kind of general admission seating or festival seating that allows moshing to happen, plans can sometimes be upended by the bands themselves. A Nine Inch Nails concert at the Boston Garden on December 12th resulted in 19 injuries and an estimated $20,000 in damages when the band's frontman Trent Reznor encouraged fans to create their own mosh pits, while Green Day were also cited for creating problems. A show that the band played at the Boston Hat Shell on September 9th turned into mayhem when twice the number of expected fans showed up, and it resulted in police shutting down the show after the band encouraged fans to come forward and mosh, and it would result in over 40 arrests and 105 injuries and an estimated $19,000 in property damage. Getting back to the bouncer trial, MTV would report that in 1997, a jury would find Gaeta not guilty as defense attorneys produced two witnesses who testified that the bouncer was not in the area when the accident occurred. On top of that, an autopsy on Mitchell revealed the presence of alcohol and hard drugs in his system, and if Gaeta had been found guilty, he could have faced upwards of 15 years in prison, with his attorneys saying in closing arguments, there's no doubt that this was a death that was needless. Life of Agony, for their part, would be outspoken about the dangers of moshing, and the fan death is still something that weighs on them heavily decades after it happened. Nearly 20 years later, a similar case involved Lamb of God's frontman, who was accused of pushing a fan off stage, where he suffered fatal injuries during a show in the Czech Republic was in the news. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, button, and subscribe. And we'll see you again in Rock Culture Stories. Take care.